Hello and welcome to another video in which I'm going to focus on Savana, which is a little town in Java Island, Indonesia. It's roughly a five to six hours drive from Jakarta, so pretty off the beaten path and it has some awesome seascapes, so it's a great spot for photography. So in this video I want to share with you how to get here, where to stay and I'll also show you a few of those seascapes which are awesome for photography. So you have a reason when you get to Java to go here like I did, even though, as I said, it's a bit off the beaten path. Let's first start with how to get here. So the six hours drive, there are options, I think, to go here by bus or a combination of buses. At least I read about it, but there's no direct bus. So you would need to change buses a few times and then also go by minibus and there are no schedules to find. It's not really an option in my opinion. So this leaves going here by car because also it's a very small town. There are no airports nearby. So you really have to drive here from Jakarta. By car, two options. You could rent a car, drive here yourself. So the streets are pretty decent, but in my opinion, it's not a good idea to rent a car in Indonesia or maybe all of Southeast Asia because I had a look, so you can rent a car, but most of the companies renting cars, they have a very bad insurance. So insurance for the car itself, it's quite okay, but you won't get a good insurance for damages you might cause if you get into an accident. And that insurance is usually the most important because the costs can get very high, especially if you get into a serious accident. And yeah, I've seen how people drive here, especially on those scooters, even if you're not the one causing the accident, you might get into trouble because I don't speak the language. I would say you also don't speak Indonesian. If you do, that's great. But yeah, I don't speak it. So I yeah, didn't want to risk it driving on those streets. And yeah, even though most likely I wouldn't get into an accident, you never know. So then you have bad insurance, not so good if you don't speak the language. So this leaves another option, which is don't rent a car, rent a driver with a car. And there are a few services. I leave a link to the one I used in the description below. So getting a driver to drive you here, the six hours drive is like $90. Some other companies might charge more, but I think $90 is quite a good price. So one way, $90, so you get back, it's like, $180 to get to Savannah and back. That's, yeah, a bit of a <laughs> price tag, but it's really worth it as you'll see shortly. So once you're in Savannah, well, you need a place to stay. And there are many homestays and little hotels. Some of them are on booking. The ratings are not so good. Most of the time there's even one Airbnb listing. But as I looked around, I actually found the location we're staying at on Google Maps itself. So the place we're staying at is called Savannah Resort. It's probably the nicest place to stay. It's a bit yeah, more comfortable than some of the homestays I've seen. So let me show you the resort a bit. It's $35 a night with breakfast. It's at the end of town. It's very quiet, comfortable rooms. Nice place also. Currently it's a weekday with the only people. The weekend there were a few people, but yeah, it's really a good option, I'd say. And from here, as I said, end of town, you have to walk a bit. So for the photo locations, I'm gonna show you. It's like three kilometers, one direction to get to those, which I think is fine. If you want, you can also find somebody with a scooter to drive you there. So I think I'm gonna use this option maybe once or twice, but in general, I don't have a problem with walking a few kilometers to get to a photo spot. So yeah, that's the place. The rooms are pretty nice. I won't show it to you now because it's a bit messy. So we arrived and packed or unpacked all our stuff. So I <laughs> don't want to fill in the room, but I'll leave a link to the homepage of this 
hotel so you can look at the photos check out the rooms you also need to book via their homepage so just whatsapp or email and yeah discuss with them when you want to stay and everything work pretty smoothly google translate helps also if you're here nobody really speaks english so you want to install google translate on your phone because that's the primary way of communicating in a town like savannah um, there are not many western tourists here so actually i'm or well, we are the only gringos i'd say which is pretty fun so people are very friendly but it's always an event when we walk through town <laughs> but yeah i think gonna get used to it but yeah so that's how to get here where to stay and now it's time to actually show you the photo spots. So let's go. So the first place I want to show you is at the eastern end of Svarna. It's at Tachun Layar. So that's a very popular spot where many of the locals go in the evening for obvious reasons, because as you can see there in the background, there are some massive sea stacks. There's a lot of rocks, a lot of wave action, and during low tide, you can walk all around here. So it's an incredible place. I think I could spend a couple of days only shooting here because there's so many possibilities. For example, wave action over there, reflections down here, reflections there, different rock structures you can get closer to the sea stacks to have them looming over me. So a really awesome place. If you go here, make sure to bring water shoes because in those low waters we have to traverse if you want to get here, there are some sea urchins. Also, the rocks are very slippery, so I find if you go along the beach, along those rocks at the top, which are dry, to this area here, you can easily cross. It's much simpler than trying to go over all those slippery rocks. And then you'll end up here at this plateau, this crack plateau. And yeah, over there are some nice foregrounds with wave action when the tide comes in. And that's an important thing. You want to know the tides because on high tide, this will all be submerged, so there's not much photography. On low tide, which we have now, everything here is a potential photo subject, potential composition. And as the tide now slowly comes in, you'll see more and more waves crashing over those rocks. And I already was here yesterday with a little more tide. You want to be very careful and have a good look at those rocks. I got drenched when a wave hit those and the water splashed over it was like somebody yeah dumped a can of water on me but yeah that's the business here <laughs> in indonesia the seascapes you will likely get wet but the reward such place is awesome so yeah that's the first place i won't film there because as i said it's a little bit treacherous hopefully the sun will peek through there at the horizon then i should get some nice light otherwise it's a moody sky, which would also look nice. So I'm going to take some photos now. So I have something to show you. And then yeah, tomorrow we'll likely head to another location because there's a lot here. It's not only this place, which by itself is worth the long travel here, but there are more. You get here, I think, from the place I'm staying. The Savannah Resort is two and a half kilometers walking. Um, yeah, if you have like one or two dollars, you can just grab somebody with a scooter he'll drive you there so also you can save the walking if you don't mind sitting with your heavy camera back on a little scooter i did this yesterday works fine but yeah walking is not so bad also that's it with this location now the photo and then off to the next location
Okay, I'm just out on a scouting run to the second location I wanted to check out. And if you don't know what a scouting run is, I'll link a video below where I talk about it. Anyways, before I show you the location, let's first discuss where it is, how to get here. First of all, if you're in Savannah, the last place we went towards the east for about two and a half kilometers from Savannah Resort. Now I went west along the road for also about two and a half kilometers until you reach a little gate on the left. So it looks like this. You go through this gate for a few hundred meters, then there's another gate where you have to pay an entrance fee of a little more than one dollar. I'm not sure how it is in the morning if you go here for sunrise, but anyways, dollar or two dollars, not too much for the location I'll show you in a second. Afterwards, head straight until you reach a larger area. Go maybe one more, 100 meters more than to the right until you see a little sign on the left. It's called Pantai. And down you go to this place. Let me show you. Wow. This is just incredible. You see all the rock structures with the little waterfalls, sea stake on the side. And now the tide is still a bit in. So it's a little treacherous down there in the morning. So tomorrow morning, there'll be low tide. I'm not sure if that means it's not enough water, but I reckon currently we have a lot of swell. So even at low tide, there should be a few waves crashing on those rocks and should be a bit safer to take photos. Only problem is weather not so good. So I ventured out this morning already, but it's yeah, just deep clouds, gray clouds, no light. So I hope tomorrow I can get a photo. Otherwise, I wanted to at least show you this location because this is definitely worth a visit. Also, it seems at some point <laughs> this was a bit more touristic, but this little jetty here, yeah, it's all that's left of it. But you don't need a jetty, you just need to get down onto those rocks, to those little waterfalls, and then sunrise in that direction. If you're lucky with the light, or if I'm lucky with the light, this should make for an awesome photo. Yeah, and you see, Savannah has a lot to offer, and I'm sweating like hell. It's, it's really high humidity. Today also the sun is out a bit, so it's very hot. And yeah, as I said, I went running here. Might be better you find somebody with a motorbike to take you here. I'm not sure if you can get one in the morning, but yeah, in the evening might also be interesting here if the sun's going down there to get some side light on the rock. Might also be an option, but anyways, what a place. And maybe I'll show you a third place because there's actually more. I'm not yet sure how it will work out time-wise because I'm just here for two more days and yeah, I have to dedicate my time now to photographing this place and also the location from yesterday. The photo I showed you wasn't yet the best one. Maybe I already showed you a photo from the future if I was lucky today or tomorrow. Um, yeah, enough talk now. That's Savannah. <laughs> 